right, Ninjaners, in this video, we're going to be talking about Placenta Previa. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then check out ninjaner.org. That's where we have all of our illustrations and our notes for these lectures for you guys to check out. We really think it's a good help for you guys, so please go check it out. And let's go into Placenta Previa. So, when we talk about Placenta Previa, we're talking about abnormal implantation of the placenta. And this is really important, but we need to go over exactly what, what's going on. So. Let's remember back from anatomy and physiology way back in the day when we are talking about the uterus. The uterus is this hollow organ that we have within our body that, it, well, some of us do, some of us don't, but it's an organ within our body that is very muscular. And this organ has the ability to expand and then contract and shrink back down. And with that movement, we are gonna be talking about the placenta. And that placenta is what? This is the area where we have that interchangeable um, blood work between mom and baby. And that's where we get the nutrients delivered to baby. That's where we can take away waste from the baby in order to help baby grow and hopefully be born. So when we have placenta previa, we have an abnormal implantation of the placenta, meaning that normally the placenta is going to implant at the fundus or up, upper portion of our uterus which is great because when we have that going on, then we're gonna have a normal cervical os. Our cervical os here, if you imagine you're looking at mom's cervix and you're looking at it, it's nice and open, there's nothing there. I mean, obviously it's closed, but it's able to open without any visibility of the placenta. And then our next one here, we have a what we call a marginal placenta previa. What that means is there's just a small portion of the placenta that is visible within the cervical os. And then we have the, the partial, which is a, a little more percentage here of the cervical os being covered. And then we have complete. And you're gonna start thinking about placenta previa and what's going on with the placenta and what is going on with baby. How are these gonna be causing issues? What is the big problem with placenta previa? And as I said in the beginning, our uterus is able to expand and grow, right? And as it, as it grows and moves and gets bigger, our placenta kind of moves with it. But when there's some issues of the uterus moving and then the cervical os starting to dilate as mom gets ready for delivery of baby, we can have some issues with the placenta. So the placenta is able to stretch a little bit and move with the uterus, but it's not moving as, as much as we would like it to when delivery occurs. So some women can, be born, or can start with a pregnancy that is possibly marginal or this low-lying placenta previa, but as the uterus expands, it kind of moves with the uterus and becomes less of a problem. But you can see here with partial or complete placenta previa, we can have some issues with delivery down the line. We're gonna have some problems with baby's head going through, particularly if there is a full-on block, a complete blockage with the placenta previa. And then partial can also cause some issues. And there's lots of issues we're gonna talk about with these, but I want you to understand that it's diagnosed by ultrasound typically after 20 weeks with this complaint of just painless vaginal bleeding. Mom's gonna come in and have painless vaginal bleeding and we're gonna say you have placenta previa because we can see it on the ultrasound. But how does that happen? What is this painless vaginal bleeding? So I'm gonna use the partial one because I think it, it's the easiest to visualize and understand. As our uterus grows and gets bigger, we can get these little micro tears, right? And these micro tears a little away from the uterus cause a little bit of bleeding and then that blood will come and trickle out, right? And then you're gonna see a little bleeding on your pad. You're gonna notice patients can say, I don't know, I had some bright, this bright red bleeding and then it was gone and now it's back again, and then it was gone. It's gonna be off and on. Are you gonna ask them, you're gonna ask them, do you have any pain? And they're gonna say no. And that's where we're gonna think, hmm, maybe our patient has a problem with their placenta. So how does this happen and what is the problem with placenta previa? The first thing is if you have a previous placenta previa, meaning you've had it before, you are likely to have it again. And why is that? There's a lot of different reasons, but the big thing is just the implantation of that um, membrane when it, or membrane, what am I trying to say? The um, implantation of our zygote or our ovum. When it does implant low, 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 low on our uterus, we can have a problem with the placenta. The placenta being low lying, and then we have an issue down the line as pregnancy continues to grow. We can also have scarring within the uterus, particularly if you've had some type of uterine damage before, whether you've had a cesarean section, and if you've ever seen it, you'll never forget it, we go in and we cut the uterus, and just think about any other scar on the body. When you're cutting something, it's gonna leave a scar behind. And when you're cutting into a uterus, 
particularly for a cesarean section, it's not a very small opening. It's a big opening because we've got to get baby out of there. So you can have scarring from a cesarean, a cesarean section, you can have it from a curtage, and then you can also have it from endometriitis. You can also have a problem with the advanced maternal age. And again, this is greater than 35 years of age. If mom is greater than 35, she's considered advanced maternal age. You can also have multi-fetal gestation. I mean, that one to me is the pretty obvious one. If you think about it, the more babies you have them inside, the more placentas we're gonna have. So you could have two, three placentas up on the top, you know, this nice fundus, but then there's no more space, so one of them's gonna be low lying. And that's gonna cause an issue with our placenta previa. You could also have closely spaced pregnancies, meaning you have baby, and then a month later, maybe you're pregnant again, and that can cause some issues because this previous pregnancy is causing that scarring in the uterus. Because once that placenta pulls off after delivery, after baby's out and placenta is now getting delivered as well, because people forget about that, baby comes out, placenta also comes out a little bit after, that can leave a scar within the uterus. And that scarred area isn't ideal for the next pregnancy to just go right in and implant. And then the last is smoking. That has to do with that vasoconstriction of smoking and what's going on within the body. So what are some of these signs and symptoms of a woman with placenta previa? What are we looking for? The big thing that the NCLEX likes to hit on, big thing, is the painless bright red bleeding. It's that spotting, it's that infrequent on and off bleeding that is bright red, but no pain, no issues, just this spotting I've noticed. It was just in my underwear. I just noticed it one time or I wiped, it was, I saw some blood. The next time I wiped, wasn't there. And that has to do again with that stretching. And I always think of it as if, you, if you've ever got like a little cut on your finger and you got a scab there. As soon as you bend your finger, that scab kind of pops off a little bit, bleeds a little, and then heals back over. That's basically the same thing that the placenta is doing. The uterus stretches a little bit. It makes those micro tears along the sides, either here, you know, you can do it underneath here, and then a little bit of blood will trickle out and be present within the underwear, the pad, when you wipe. The other thing that we can have that's going on, and the signs and symptoms for Previa are very important because they are specific to Previa. There's no other issues that are going on. The uterus will be soft and non-tender. So you can palpate uterus, palpate mom's uterus, feel around any pain. They're gonna say no, everything feels soft, it's not hard, there's no pain. The fundal height is higher than the gestational age. And why is that? You gotta think about what's going on within uterus, right? Normally, Baby eventually has got the umbilical cord, and when they are ready to come out, baby goes head first, right? Well, here, there is a block, so baby is not gonna be head first. Baby is chilling in the uterus, feet first, right? So because of this, that fundal height could be their head or could be their butt pushing a little higher than normal. So the fetal position then can be breech, oblique, or transverse because of this uterus or because of this placenta being in an abnormal place it's now causing an abnormal position for baby and we can try to maneuver if there's only a marginal or a partial and we can still deliver we can maneuver baby but typically we want to look into cesarean section to get baby out and then the last thing is fetal heart rate is going to be normal maternal vital signs are going to be normal or within normal limits for that mother because there may be other conditions that are implicating that you know mom's got other things going on, but as far as placenta previa, vital signs are looking good. So let's go in and talk about the treatment and the interventions that we're gonna be given mom. So we're moving on to treatment now, and when we talk about treatment of placenta previa, there is not much that we need to do, but we do wanna make sure that mom and baby are okay. So we're gonna do some basic um, ultrasound just to see if we can visualize what's going on with uh, placenta and baby, check phenol monitoring, making sure heart rate looks good, and then get some basic labs on mom that we wanna look into her CBC and her type and screen, making sure we know her levels of hemoglobin hematocrit, making sure we know her type and screen just in case we need to give blood and RH factor. And then we can also do the Klein Hauer Bex. Some of the interventions are just to make sure that we can maintain pregnancy as long as possible um, before delivery. So depending on the type of placenta previa mom has will depend on the type of treatment we're giving. Some are very severe, some are little to no changes in a normal pregnancy, a normal placement of the placenta. But what we want to do is to make sure we are teaching our patient to assess for bleeding and leakage. Um, if the bleeding is a little more concerning, we want to have them maybe count pads, dep depending on what's going on with, again, the type of placenta that mom has um, and where it is located. We also want to make sure we're measuring fundal height because, again, we are having those differences within fundal height because of the placement of the placenta. 
We can perform those Leopold maneuvers, which is helping baby's position get a little better. Refrain from any type of vaginal exams or a vaginal intercourse. We want to make sure when we are teaching our patients that we're talking about, we're teaching them that the placenta is possibly within the way. It's covering that cervical os opening. So any type of probe or um, digit that's going within to that area can possibly cause some premature bleeding or separation of the placenta from the uterine wall, and we don't want that happening. We can be giving them IV fluids and then blood products if needed, to, again, depending on the mom's severity of placenta previa. They're gonna be on strict bed rest and no strenuous activity because of this. We don't want them prematuring pulling the placenta off. So again, nothing vaginal, no intercourse, no transvaginal ultrasounds, and then possibly a, a cesarean delivery at 34 weeks. So that is it, Ninja Nerds. I hope it made sense. I think the placenta is a really unique type of organ to talk about. And as always, until next time.